In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what is sphericity? And I'm going to explain its importance in the context of repeated measures ANOVA. So sphericity. Most people are interested in sphericity mostly because it's a, an assumption of repeated measures ANOVA. Otherwise, people probably wouldn't think about it. Now, there are many descriptions and explanations of sphericity. But in my opinion, they, are, they tend to be complicated or they lack an intuitive understanding. That is, once you see how the calculations are performed or it's explained to you, you don't really understand why that assumption would be important for repeated measures ANOVA, uh, but not in the between groups ANOVA. And here's how Wikipedia defines sphericity. Sphericity relates to the equality of the variances of the differences between levels of the repeated measures factor. Now, even if you could understand uh, what that was saying and you saw the calculations, I, I think you would still struggle to see why that's important. But I'd like to ex explain it in a different way so that you can understand why it's important or why it's different in the repeated measures case. So let's look at the t-test formula, just the independent samples t-test formula. This is the formula. Well, this is one formula. And you can see in the numerator, there's the difference between the two means. And then the denominator is the standard error of the difference between two means. And in that denominator portion, you have the variance for group 1, and you have the variance for group 2. And when we do a t-test, or repeated measures ANOVA, we test the assumption of homogeneity of variance. We need to see those variances equal uh, within sampling fluctuations. Although the t-test is robust to violations to that, uh, it's actually very robust, uh, but there are limitations to that robustness. In the dependent samples case, I think a, the best formula to represent the, de the dependent sample t-test is this one here. It looks very similar to the independent sample t-test formula, but the key difference is that there's this term after the variance is divided by the sample size, there's something multiplied by 2, and that something is the covariance between scores on group uh, time 1 and scores at time 2. There's almost invariably a positive correlation between time 1 and time 2. And when that correlation is expressed in unstandardized form, it's a covariance. And you subtract that term from the variances. You basically subtract it from the standard error of the difference between the means. And that causes the dependent sample t-test to be much more powerful than the independent sample t-test because you're subtracting the correlation between time 1 and time 2 from the two variances. Now, what if you had three within subject factor means to compare? So it's not just two means like the dependent sample case, but instead a repeated measures ANOVA. Well, in that case, if you think of the differences between the means and you had three means, you could test the hypothesis with three different dependent sample t-tests as to whether the three means are equal to each other. That's not a very powerful way to do it because you ramp up your per comparison, uh, your family-wise error rate increases. But if you just think about it this way, each one of these dependent sample t-tests has its own sum of the variances minus the covariance uh, in each of the three dependent sample t-tests. And you might call this something like the sum of the variances minus their covariances. And those need to be equal to each other. So just like homogeneity of variance in the independent sample t-test, we need to see the variances equal. Well, in the repeated measures ANOVA, ANOVA uh, repeated measures ANOVA, the differences between the, the variances and the covariances associated with each mean comparison, those have to be equal. So each of these three sums of the variances minus covariance have to be equal. And that's actually this, the assumption of sphericity, that these three denominator terms within the dependent sample t-test, they have to be equal to each other. That's what the sphericity assumption applies. And the repeated measures ANOVA uses a pooled error term. And the pooled error term has to be homogeneous, or at least what it's pooling together has to be homogeneous. And you might call this the homogeneity of sum of variances minus covariance assumption. 
instead of saying the assumption of sphericity, which is almost inexplicable in terms of just looking at the word. But if you say something like homogeneity of some